Got a new good project here. This is the Open Tendo. It's an open source uh, project someone was working on, basically re remaking, sort of replicating the motherboard on an original uh, Nintendo Entertainment System. Uh, it's unpopulated, of course. The board was about $15. I got it off Muramasa Entertainment, I believe is the website. And they just give you this board, and then there is a list, uh, a bill of materials, which is a big old spreadsheet with a dozens of components on it. And you got to kind of go through and source your components to populate this board with. So that took time. I had to go through all this. I kind of organized Neat Freak. We got uh, parts from a bunch of different websites, stuff from the UK, stuff from China stuff from the US, you know, I had to wait all sorts of times for different things, and uh, a couple components, a handful of components are unique to the original system, so you do need a donor board to remove them from that and then transfer to here, but uh, yeah, why am I doing it? Because I really enjoy soldering, I know some people kind of are scared of it, working with electronics or whatever, I don't know. Uh, to me, it's really fun. It's kind of like miniature welding-y, sort of, in a roundabout way. Kind of, not really, yes. And, uh, yeah, this could be cool. In the end, I'll pretty much have a brand new system, in a way. And on top of that, I'm also going to do Tim Worthington's RGB mod and to this. So I'll take this board and then I'll do all that work, and then we'll stick it in a case. I'll clean up, and then... Uh, That'll be that, so let's get to it. So, I've been working on this for a couple weeks now. Pretty much the only time I can spend on it is on a weekend and having to wait for parts to show up and all that jazz, keep getting delayed, etc. But uh, this is essentially an entirely new original NES, other than um, the two main chips, the lockout chip, uh, and like one or two other little parts I had to swap over that were unique. Uh, you can't buy them new, but other than that, everything is pretty much new. I did test it, and it works great. So that is fantastic. Uh, soldered all this business on. Put new caps in the Power RF module, except for one. I didn't have another one, so I ordered more of those. Those are on the way. And uh, yeah, so now we move on to the next stage, which is installing all these goodies. This is uh, Tim, I guess it's Tim Worthington's uh, Australian guy, his RGB mod for the original NES. So we got the whole board, we got to solder, solder all the wires on for that. This is the pallet toggle switch, which I'm not even sure if I really need to do that, but eh. And ordered this uh, 3D printed multi, multi out, this is standard Nintendo multi out switch, came in white. Obviously, I didn't think that's going to look good, so I gave it a quick spritz with some primer. It's roughly the same color. And we got to wire all this in here and then make a couple small modifications to the case for the switch 
and then the connector in the rear. So let's try and get that done. with this thing for about six hours a little bit more than that break in between and it did not work quite right first time something was wrong with the colors I'm not exactly sure what because then I took it out looked at everything kind of finagled it around don't think I changed anything and then I put it back in to test it again and it seems to be working okay and the colors are looking good and we've got sound so yeah success I believe hell yeah all right here we are at the end finally been working on this thing for probably like a month now it feels like having to wait for components and do all this work really only able to do stuff on the weekend but here we are it's done Hell yeah, and as you can see, it's working. System, great shape. Uh, after all the insides were done, I then took the whole case and cleaned that up. Soap, water, brushes, all that jazz, magic eraser, any scuff marks, and any nonsense on the outside. This thing's in great shape. None of the corners are cracked. There isn't really any uh, super obvious yellowing, as far as I can tell. Um, it's in great shape. We've got our little palette swap uh, switch in here which it's not going to come across on camera, I'm sure, but it switches between two different color modes for the system. One is pretty brown and ugly, so I don't think I'm going to use that. And uh, But hey, it's in there, so why not? <clears throat> uh, people wondering what the hell the whole point of all this was. The Basically, having the whole new original board and all the components, that was just a fun project. Um, obviously, everything is pretty much new in it so this thing should last a long time but uh, in terms of the mod Tim Tim Worthington's RGB mod on it all that extra that board and the wiring and whatnot that allowed me to uh, add a N Nintendo standard Nintendo AV multi out which I have a cable for that already and then uh, that outputs via RGB which for this particular TV is then converted into component and then into this TV because it's not RGB modded and I don't think it really needs to. It looks fantastic with component. Um, why the comparison, uh, all this jazz? The system typically output via composite, which you can see in this example here. The difference between the quality, the image quality, the clarity of it, the sharpness is a massive difference. Um, it's not really gonna come across on camera like this on the screen these, these CRTs are hard to film but uh, yeah it's a much sharper picture much better the colors should be more accurate to you know what's was originally intended and uh, yeah finally done and on to the next project sweet mm -hmm. 